Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel where we talk about skincare, grooming, and sometimes hair, so if that sounds like a thing, make sure you are subscribed. Also, come and follow me on Instagram where I post a lot of stuff you're not gonna see here on YouTube. The intro is back. I did a poll. People wanted the intro back by a fair bit, so it's back. Today I want to share with you some of my hits and shits for the month, so products that didn't quite um, spark my interest. Products that I was just like, mm, you know, like a bit disappointed by, and even products that did this to my skin. And hits, products that I love and products that I'm looking forward to using more of. So let's get into it. Let's start off with the first shit. This is less of a shit and more of a miss. So this is the Fig Boosting Essence from I'm From. I love I'm From. I'm From is one of my favorite brands. They actually make one of my favorite skincare products of all time, the I'm From Rice Toner. I didn't have to say the brand then the rice toner. So when I saw that they were releasing a fig line, I was like, yes, I'm from, are finally releasing something new. And then I was like, wait, fig? Didn't quite spark my interest like the majority of their other products. But let's have a look at the ingredients of this before I talk about why it was a bit of a miss for me. So fig fruit extract is the fig, obviously, in this product. It's actually well known for its antioxidant properties and known to help prevent trans epidermal water loss. It can reduce inflammation and irritation and can actually help with dry skin as well. This does feel like a moisturizing product, but more of that in a bit. This particular essence contains allantoin as well, one of my favorite ingredients when it comes to soup soothing the skin, and it's known to have some quite good healing properties as well. So you have fructose and sodium hyaluronate in here, which are some hydrating ingredients. Betaine salicate as well, which is a mixture of, um, betaine is your moisturizing ingredients, then your salicylate is your is salicylic acid. It's a very gentle exfoliating ingredient. Like I would use this alongside other exfoliators. I wouldn't count this as an exfoliating stage. You do have silicone in here in the form of diphenyl dimethicone, which is fine, but I had it in a toner once and I just find it, silicone's a bit odd in the toner essence stage. I don't know, is that weird? It's weird to me. As with all products from I'm From, you have a huge amount of their actual star ingredients. So you have 62.7% of fig fruit extract in here. It's an interesting ingredient, but I'm just not interested in it. It's not that I don't care, I just feel like whilst its benefits are interesting and potentially good, I just feel like it's nothing new. And in this case, I do feel like it's a bit of a gimmicky thing in the sense that I'm from where like, what other fruit or natural food item can we make into a product now? They've got their rice, they've got their vitamin tree, they got their honey stuff. And it was a bit like, I wish it would just expand on what people love about their products. I wish it would expand on the rice range. I want a serum, I want a rice serum. I think that would be amazing. But there's nothing about this that makes me think if I don't own this, if, I, if I'm if i not using this, that I'm missing out. You can see I'm not actually used a lot. I probably use it about five times. Going back to that moisturizing bit I was talking about, this isn't heavy, but it does have, it almost leaves like a film on your skin and that could be down to the silicone. It was just like a very slight moisturizing layer that didn't feel like it was going anywhere. It didn't feel sticky, but it also didn't feel like it was gonna penetrate my skin. It just felt like it was sitting on my skin. It did feel like maybe a little bit protective. If I had dry skin, it would probably be nice for me, but as someone with oily skin and the weather's been quite warm recently, this wasn't an ideal feeling on the skin. This is fragrance free. I don't know what fig is supposed to smell like anyway, but it doesn't smell like that. Um, it's also alcohol free as well. So if you do have very dry skin that's prone to sensitivity, this might be quite a nice extra step for you if you need it, but again, as long as you're moisturizing properly, I don't feel like this is something that anyone needs. Okay, so let's talk about the product that did this to my skin. What you see in the thumbnail, this is the Wish Trend Sulfur 3% Clean Gel. Before I get into this, I wanna use this um, time to stress the importance of patch testing your skin, especially when you're trying new ingredients, even if you think your skin is very resilient. A blob of product behind your ear, rub it in, leave it for 48 hours, see how your skin reacts, then it's good to use. I've become cocky <laughs> with my career. I just slather shit on my skin and never expect to break out or get any kind of irritation, but this just did that. I wanted to try this mainly because, well, it was sent to me, but I wanted to try this as well because sulfur is meant to be good for breakouts and rosacea as well. I've never really seen it in a direct spot treatment form like this, but they do say you can use this as a weightless gel textured moisturizer. Having very mild rosacea, I thought I'd see results quite quickly from something like this. This didn't aggravate my rosacea in any way. In fact, it didn't 
make a difference at all to it. I probably didn't use it for long enough because of how it started to break me out. All this seemed to do was break me out. I wasn't, it wasn't even just breakouts. It was like itchy skin. Water would sting my skin, like all the little spots bumping up. You can see I've got a very red spot in that picture that I showed you on my cheek that just stung and itched, even if wind got to it. <laughs> if, it if wind touched it, it really, really hurt. So yeah, but supposedly sulfur is meant to be, it's collodials, collodial sulfur, sorry. What that's meant to be good for is a number of things. So regulating sebum production, leading to less oil production and leading to less clogged kind of breakouts. It's anti-inflammatory and antibacterial as well. So maybe good as a direct spot treatment once you've patch tested it and realize it doesn't hurt you. <laughs> and you have sodium hyaluronate in there as well as a hydrating product. Saying that though, this isn't like a standalone cream. They do say you can use as your last step over the entire face, um, a thin layer, but this isn't going to help you feel hydrated. This isn't going to help you feel moisturized. It's not drying, but it's definitely not a moisturizing product really. Um, so I would use this kind of like after serums, before moisturizers, before I go to bed. This smells like sulfur, as you would expect. It's got that eggy smell, which I wouldn't mind if it was doing something good for my skin. In. After I stopped using this, I smelt that smell for a good couple of days after, especially when I was in the shower and like there was kind of like heat around it. It's like it made it like evaporate off my skin and smell. Um, my pillows smelt like sulfur for a few days as well. So it, it wasn't worth carrying on for me for obvious reasons. I could tell it wasn't a purge because I purged before, this was just pure irritation. Okay, so I'm gonna move on to the hits now because these are products that help me recover from that irritation and kind of just get my skin back to normality. So I'm gonna start off with one that I've given a pretty bland review to before, and that's the Cosrx AC Collection Blemish Spot Clearing Serum. As I said, I reviewed this before and I pretty much said it's good for when you have breakouts, but other than that, I wouldn't use it every day. But that's also now why I love it so much. This made a huge and pretty much instant difference to my irritation as far as soothing the skin, taking down that redness. It's calming, it's been restorative, and helped take away my angry looking skin. So this has been really, really good. So in here we have propolis extract, which isn't something that I really jumped on the trend of, but it's known to have antibacterial properties. So good for breakouts. Niacinamide, which has so many amazing qualities, which is why it's one of my favorite ingredients of all time ever. So regulating sebum production, reducing redness, inflammation, help to fade dark spots as well. This is panthenol in as well, that has again, amazing anti-inflammatory properties and wound healing as well. So great if you do have that damaged skin, if you've picked a spot maybe, or you've been itching at your skin because it's unbearably irritated, this has been instantly soothing. It has allantoin again as well, which is soothing, but it also has tea tree oil, which is a essential oil. It's something that my skin just doesn't mind. It's something that I've always gravitated towards when I do have these really bad breakouts. But tea tree oil is unique in the sense that it does have acne fighting properties. So sensitive skin would probably still hate it if you do have, not sensitive skin, because it's not skin type, but if your skin is prone to sensitivity, you may want to avoid it, especially if you don't like fragrance. But yeah, this isn't something I'll be using every day all the time, but it's something I'll be using when my skin is maybe feeling clogged, congested, when I feel like a breakout's on the way, when my skin does need soothing and calming. Um, I chucked away the toner because there's a toner version of this and I barely ever used it and it went out of date, so I had to throw it away. And now I'm tempted to kind of rebuy that four times where my skin is going a little bit crazy. One of the main products I feel really, really has been making a difference as far as restoring my skin back to some normality is the Sunday Riley Ice Cream Moisturize, no, no, it's not called that, um, Ice Ceramide Moisturizing Cream by Sunday Riley. This is of course a ceramide based moisturizer. Ceramides are essentially the building blocks to our skin. It looks really thick and rich and it kind of is, but my oily skin has absolutely no problem with this, even if I do wear it during the day. Thin layer of this in the morning when my skin was irritated was absolutely fine, even during the hotter weather. At night, this was nice to layer up a little bit more without being sticky and greasy and sticking to the pillow. It's got a nice sweet scent to it, um, but it's not overbearing. I believe that's because of the coconut water in here, which we'll talk about in a bit. I don't quite get the ice cream marketing thing. It doesn't make sense to me, but it's got some amazing ingredients in. So this has red algae in, which is in there to help moisturize the skin as well as prevent trans epidermis. 
epidermal water loss, which happens a lot more when your skin is ruined. This has squalade in as well, so a skin identical ingredient. Again, moisturizing and helping keep in that hydration. Glycerin is in here as well for hydration. And then we have the coconut fruit extract, not oil. So this is soothing, it's hydrating. It contains amino acids and good sugars for the skin, which again, I have to be honest, I don't know a lot about good sugars. It's something I'm gonna have to look into as far as like their benefits go. If you know a bit about it, let me know in the comments down below. But most importantly, we have our ceramides in here. So ceramide NP, AP and EOP to help restore that skin barrier, which is damaged when your skin is irritated, probably when you're testing too many new products and it helps keep your skin hydrated. So when you do feel like your skin is irritated, when you feel like you've over exfoliated, when your skin is feeling dry, stretchy, itchy, you might wanna grab a moisturizer that's rich in ceramides just to give your skin that extra boost. But there we have it. Those are my hits and shits of this month. As always, I usually do the statement at the beginning of the video, but if these products work for you, please keep using them. These are just products that didn't work for me or have worked for me. So I'd love to know if any of these shits are your hits and vice versa. Let me know in the comments down below. But that is it from me now, guys. I will see you next time.